Oh, good morning. Uh, we thank the Lord because he has been so good to us the all of this week. We are in day seven and also the last day of our devotion in the morning. We have been running a series for the whole week, myself and uh, my wife, and we have been having a theme that says, let God be God. When we started, we saw a king, King Dairus, telling Daniel, my friend, they have duped me, but your God whom you serve continually will be able to save you. Then again we saw when Satan wanted to annihilate the Israelites. Then God provides a way out unto them. And when Haman wants to finish Mordecai, the king is just sleeping in the night and imagining how somebody saved him. And say, and then ask, what can be done to such a man? God can provide a help unto you for a future that you cannot be able to understand. Then we saw someone in the book of Esther, how God worked with the children of Israel when this young girl is saying, I will go to the king. If I perish, I perish. <laughs> By the way, in your challenges, decide to remain with the Lord. If it means you perish, let it be nothing. Better perish, but stick with the Lord. Yesterday, we saw a king who always loved to know the will of the Lord. This is Jehoshaphat. And when he is praying, he is telling God that your arm has might and power. Then after, and we don't know what to do. Our eyes are on you, God. And we are saying, most of the time, you don't know what to do. Your eyes need to be on the Lord. Then the Lord answered him by saying that just take a position. Stand still. Do nothing. Because the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. <coughs> Sorry. Do you know the challenges you have in life? These things that troubles you. You may think that it is your personal problem. It is your personal battle. It is not your personal battle. It is because Satan is battling with God. So God is telling you, Surrender unto me so that I can battle it out on your behalf. So stand with the Lord, wait upon the Lord, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And uh, that is why today we will look at the book of Exodus. 14 and a bit of 15 and see how the Lord is fighting our battles and I plead with you that in your life let God be God in your life you understand it the book of Exodus is where 
Exodus 14 is where the children of Israel are leaving Egypt and going to Canaan. And as they go, they have a great trouble on the way that they have left, but it is still reported that the children of Israel are running away. Then Satan enters the heart of Pharaoh, and, and Pharaoh says that we are going for them. He left himself, and with, with, with uh, a team going for war, camels, and all the like, and soldiers. Then, uh, as they go, the Israelites are seeing a great multitude coming behind them. I know you know this story. And there is nowhere else they can run to because each side, to the left or to the right, there are mountains. They can't go through it. In front of them, there is the Red Sea. And behind them, Pharaoh is coming with people who are ready for war. Then they start crying. They start crying and say, telling Moses that were there no graves in Egypt? Why were you bringing us to die here in the wilderness? Then God tells Moses in verse 13, Exodus 14, verse 13, then Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God, they don't know what they can do. Just the same way Joshua was telling God, I, we don't know what we can do. By the way, our, even our imagination is limited. We don't know what we can do. But the Lord in several places now is telling us, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Do you know here he is saying, when going through the zigzag routes you are taking in life, God is telling you that that journey might be long and tough, but wait the Lord is going to save you. So just be in him, wait and see his salvation. Stand still and see what God is going to do. In the long run, it will be, it will be a testimony. So that verse is saying, Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. The Lord is willing to fight for you as you hold your peace. Then it continues. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry, do you cry to, to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on a dry ground through the midst of the sea. I, and indeed, and I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know 
that I am the Lord. When I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, over his chariots, and over his horsemen. God is saying here, Satan is playing with my children. So it is a fight I must fight on their behalf. And at the end of the fight, they will honor me. I must gain honor over myself. By the way, even all the things that you see in this world, Satan has brought sin. That sin is rampant everywhere. God will fight it until he will gain honor over himself. Stand with the Lord. When, look at verse, that, verse 21. It says, Then Moses stretched out, out, out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided so the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left hand. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea. The thing that I loved with that statement is that God is saying that Moses only stretched his hand, but the waters were separated. There were waters on the left and waters on the right. Let me tell you, there are so many theories that have come out that have been brought by Satan, even to say that they did not go through the Red Sea. Some are saying they went, they stepped on the reeds and they passed. And some are saying that this is a myth, it can't happen. But let me tell you, the Lord God of Israel has power to do this. How I wish you have gone to the coastlands and see the ocean and see the raging waves on the ocean, how they are powerful. And that is how the sea is, powerful waves. And water has a lot of power you would fear going into the waters. And God is telling you that the water is divided and you can see a wall at the top there. Waves are raging at the top. And you are seeing it on the right and on the left. And you are down here. What is there is water. It is something that is dreadful. Something you would not dare go into it. By the way, it needs faith to step onto that road. That road is a difficult road. You would not dare go through it. But the Israelites believed God and what he said, and they went through. And when they went through, what surprises me that the Egyptians are seeing that this thing can never be imagined. Pharaoh could have seen this and said, we have never seen such a thing and it can't happen. Maybe their God is so superior we never need to pursue these people. But they just there. Satan would just stay and come. When he's taking you to destruction, he will just take you and you will be headstrong going for destruction. Then they follow in and then there is mud, they can't reach them and there is a pillar of, of cloud covering covering their way, they can't see until the Israelites pass over. Then they, they remain the Egyptians in the sea. And all of them, including Pharaoh, died in the sea. That is when God is saying, you will know, you will see it after I have gained honor over myself. Over Pharaoh, sorry, over Pharaoh. 
and over the Egyptians and all his chariots. He is telling you, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In your life, wait upon the Lord. The Lord wants to deliver you. It might have been long, but God is willing to deliver you. So the last two verses, verse 30 and 31, is saying, So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw great work which the Lord had done in Egypt, so the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. They saw the deliverance and they feared the Lord. Wait upon the Lord and see how the Lord is going to do his plans in your life and you will be surprised at the good plans that God has for you. And you will fear him the more. Let God be God. After this, after this, they sing, chapter 15. I'll read verse 1, 2, 3, but I'll, I only need 3, but I'm reading all of them. The next chapter, which is 15, is saying, Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. By the way, the Lord will bless you. You will have nothing to do but to praise his name. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God. I will praise him. My father's God, I will exalt him. Just try to imagine, verse 3 is my verse, so I can hesitate a little bit in 30 seconds to, to say something. Try to imagine uh, you know, I come from a uh, near water body, uh, which is, is it the second largest freshwater lake in the world? Uh, they tell me that it is, it is 80 meters deep, the deepest part. Then I think of uh, the deepest lake, they say, is Lake Tanganyika, which is 1.4 kilometers deep. Oceans can be so many kilometers deep. And the sea is much more than that. Maybe they didn't pass through the deepest part, which might be, which might be some kilometers deep. But they might have passed only through somewhere which is 100 meters deep. Just imagine 100 meters water Make a, water making a wall of 100 meters going up on the right. 100 meters of water on the left. What if it is a kilometer you? Up there, water's there, and you are passing through. After such deliverance, you will tell God, I will press you. I will sing unto you. Because you have triumphed gloriously. You have seen such kind of deliverance, something you never imagined. That is when you are telling God, I don't know what to do. Lord, please deliver me. So verse 3 is saying, 15 verse 3 is saying, The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. By the way, this is my verse. I like somebody who is going for war. 
A man who will go into war and succeed. The Lord, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. My God is a man of war. If Satan tries to come and battle me, my warrior will come and he will triumph gloriously. In all your challenges, the Lord is coming to battle it for you. Believe this man. Believe he's a man of war. In your problems, in your challenges, there is a man of war who wants to fight for you. And he must win the battle. Our song 439, when you look at the second stanza, I don't know whether it can be projected. Song 439, we are seeing the second stanza before we sing the whole song and pray. It is saying, I ask the warrior on the field. This was his soul inspiring song with courage bold the sword I'll wield the battle is not long then weep no more endure the conflict till thy works is done for this we know the prize is sure when the victory is won. The battle is not long. Be confident that we are going to win the conflict. May God bless us.